This is Talking Foreign Policy, an internationalist perspective on Canada's role abroad. Uh, I'm Eve Engler. Yesterday, thousands marched in Toronto in an emergency demonstration to oppose Canada's complicity in Israel's assault against uh, on Rafa, where about a million and a half Palestinians are uh, are cloistered in incredibly dire uh, 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 situation. At the march, an individual climbed atop the scaffolding of Mount Sinai Hospital and waved a Palestinian flag. Uh, it, the Israel lobby, MPs, and even Prime Minister Trudeau, in hours, within hours of this demonstration this morning, today, have all tweeted out condemning the incident and protest. To discuss this uh, smear, uh, uh, who is the source of the initial attack, and how it fits into a broader pattern of uh, pro-genocide forces aligning with uh, Kahanist uh, fascistic elements is uh, Anna Lippmann with Jews Say No to Genocide Coalition, uh, who is also the source of the photo that has uh, blown up into this big, uh, big uh, incident. So first of all, uh, thanks a lot for uh, uh, joining Talking Foreign Policy. Um, and can you describe the just sort of demonstration, what motivated, and then the photo that uh, that you took? Yeah. So um, with the bombing, the intense bombing on Rafa that started uh, Sunday night, there was a, a need for emergency actions happening all over the world, um, and and one was called in Toronto. Uh, this action that happened last night was. Um, about four hours in length, started at the uh, U.S. No, started at the Israeli consulate, uh, ended at Young and Dundas Square, and and marched through the city on a route that um, we've marched on for for the past several weeks. And almost every rally that I've been a part of has has marched down right. Um, and yet, because one. Um, you know, person in this march decided to hold a Palestinian flag, you know, on scaffolding throughout the march, but uh, also in one moment on top of uh, Mount Sinai as we were all walking by. This has been really taken and reframed as as painting the whole march as anti-Semitic, right? And everyone's just really jumped on board. Um, and, you know, it's so silly to think that really all we have to do in this current context to be anti-Semitic is hold a Palestinian flag, right? Yeah, and I, I saw different reports saying that this individual one, there was one like Spider-Man person who was climbing like all kinds of different things and waving a Palestinian flag that I actually saw uh, at the demo in Montreal on Sunday. Uh, there was a Spider-Man kind of dude who was climbing poles throughout uh, on Fanel of X Street. Um, so it's not, I mean, it's, I don't know, you can, you can, question whether someone should do that, the danger of climbing, or maybe it's a bad example for the children, I'm, I'm not sure, but but uh, it seems to to blow it up into all kinds of broader political uh, uh, meaning, um, I think is uh, is is kind of kind of dubious. But so 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 you took, as I understand it, from what I could tell on 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 Twitter, looking through Twitter, you took this photo of the of this person on the scaffold and waving a Palestinian flag. I assume you saw it as as um, as kind of inspiring or this you know interesting image, uh, and then this was taken uh, from again my reading of the timeline on Twitter from uh, Mayor Weinstein, who's the former head of the Jewish Defense League, uh, uh, you know, fascistic uh, group, far right, uh, violent organization in the past. And then the sort of more mainstream voices, people like Marco Mendicino, liberal MP, people like Michael Levitt, the former liberal MP, head of the Friends of Simon Weisenthal Center, they then sort of said this was like a protest against this hospital, which is you know now a public hospital, but has roots in, in uh, being a Jewish uh, a hospital. And then they said that this was the whole demonstration was just targeting this Mount Sinai hospital and not to do with Canada's complicity in destruction of uh, Gaza, Rafa, et cetera. Yeah. And I think, um, you know, some things that I've heard is that we, we rushed the hospital, we blocked the doors. 
um, all these things that didn't happen. Literally, we we marched by on the street, and one person, our friendly neighborhood Spider Man, uh, put a flag on top and stood there. Right, um, and it's so silly. You know, myself and several other Jews were there. I'm a patient at Mount Sinai Hospital, um, so this idea that that walking by a hospital is is somehow anti-Semitic is just utter nonsense, but really plays well into this idea of of getting the uh, you know sort of discourse away from the bombing in Rafa, the ways that uh, Canada is complicit in that, the arms that we're sending Israel. Um, and, you know, for me, it's no coincidence that, you know, the guy who shared the photo uh, was the former head of, again, JDL, which has these huge connections started by Meir Kahane, right? And, um, you know, it's those same fascists. You can see that same flag being uh, waved at the uh, protest blocking aid convoys coming into Gaza, right? And so... You know, to me, it really shows how just the ideology of Zionism, which is so based in racism, in settler colonialism, uh, kind of can't really waver too far away from its fascist roots, right? Because it necessitates this, um, you know, dehumanizing of an other, this really huge emphasis on on protecting private property, on policing and enforcement, right? And so, you know, it's it's also not a coincidence that the police budget in Toronto is is being uh you know voted on tomorrow, right? And so we're really seeing the ways that settler colonialism here and in Israel are connected through these you know fascist ideologies and and how even our sort of liberal leaders uh, latch on to that discourse and that ideology because it just goes so hand in hand with with our policy here in Canada, right? And and I, I've seen that uh, Weinstein, Mayor Weinstein, um, the former head of the uh, Jewish Defense League in Toronto, he has been the source, it seems to me, the source of, of a lot of these videos. Um, he often, I think he basically follows your account, follows lots of pro-Palestinian accounts, and then kind of repurposes them and frames these protests uh, against genocide as, you know, pro Hamas, anti Jewish, you know, whatever. But but he's been he seems to have been very effective in getting um, the more mainstream voices to 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 follow him, and and to you know sort of take take echo what he what he's saying, and and um, I guess there's you, can you tell us a little bit about like the whole thing on the the highway four hundred one where they got the the, the criminalized basically holding flags on top of the highway and a little bit about Weinstein to the extent that, you know, you know, about his background and sort of being a bit of a, a, a violent uh, uh, character. Yeah, I think, um, you know, what's so important to recognize is that, you know, Weinstein himself was one of the key people behind the criminalizing of uh, the Eglinton Lawrence Lawrence for Palestine folks at that highway, right? And so this is a group of folks that live in that neighborhood, that live in that riding. And Weinstein literally like um, got a whole bunch of white fascist uh, Zionist Jewish folks to come from other parts of the city and the GTA to come do a counter protest and, and to really instigate and and cause that um you know criminalization of that bridge right and um you know with Benet Brith definitely kind of like asking for that injunction uh the police uh, the head of the Toronto police services you know criminalizing protesting on that bridge we can very much see the way that you know Weinstein's rhetoric is is being picked up and and really utilized against pro-Palestinian protesters, right? Um, and, you know, I think something that's just so kind of baffling to me about that is that we know that the JDL has been criminalized not only here in North America, but they're, they're literally uh, 
a criminalized party in Israel itself, right? So if a fascist regime is calling you fascist, it's going to be pretty <laughs> bad, right? Um, and, and yet, like, um, you know, even Justin Trudeau, Olivia Chow just came out with a statement. Uh, Doug Ford did a press release earlier today. Um, all these things are happening. All about yesterday's incident. Absolutely. Yes. Uh, saying charges should be laid, investigated as a hate crime. Um, you know, all this from, uh, you know, a man in an organization that has been, uh, you know, behind some like actual violent crimes in the U.S. at his birth, right? And and again, some of the most violent uh, settler ideologies that we're seeing today in, uh, you know, so-called Israel, right? Yeah, that's pretty, it's pretty uh, remarkable to see. But I guess at the, at the macro level, when um, it's, un they're supporting what's unjustifiable, which is this horrible onslaught in Gaza, uh, they need to uh, change the channel uh, from uh, the those who are, you know, protesting genocide, and um, and those who are, uh, you know, trying to end this. And and you know, when the tr Justin Trudeau refers to it as reprehensible, as he did in his tweet, what's really reprehensible is the fact that the Canadian government is enabling Israel's uh, uh, mass uh, slaughter. Um, thanks a lot for uh, coming on to uh, Talking Foreign Policy um, and uh, keep up the uh, the great uh, activism you're doing in, um, in Toronto. Thanks so much.